You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. Welcome back. Can you believe it? We're back. All right, so we had to take a week off real quick because we had to do some things. So for the first time, we actually had a rerun. But for those that are listening that's brand new, you wouldn't have even known that because the topic is so dope anyway. And it's all new to you. Exactly. I hope you guys like the, uh, I wouldn't say so much repeat, but just going back down memory lane. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It's it's not a good memory. It was all about, you know, our police uh, lives more valuable than, you know, yours. Um, And unfortunately, that's a topic that has to be brought up often in order for us to keep discussing it so that's why it was a good one to come back to but uh you know sometime often we have enough episodes we'll uh, revisit a few of them each week while we prepare for some new content and uh travel around of course right because we got some busy stuff happening and but no matter what we always share our adventures and what's going on in our lives with you guys um so of course we're going to wind up having um probably some new uh road trip adventures and um some new stories and interviews that we're planning. We're planning a lot for 2018. So look out for some of those uh, in-studio interviews as well as a lot more of the man on the streets that we're going to be coming up with. And that would be including also some races that we're going to be doing then in 2018 as well. Yeah, so we're going to do um, some more of our uh, races that we're going to be um, hitting up uh, starting off hopefully in January because um, we've got to do the Phoenix one, of course. And uh, continue on from there. So we'll do a minimum of three, but um, hopefully we'll be able to get up to maybe ten or so. That'll be good. So what are we doing today? What are um, we talking about? So today, um, for the relationship tip, uh, let's hit up the Me Too update. We're going to do an update on the Me Too. Because um, even since the last time we discussed it, uh, things have happened with the time cover and some of the discussions um, so much beyond that, as well as some of the other people that have, um, I guess, had cases come up against them in uh, popular... Uh, culture Mm -hmm. and Uh, then for movie or entertainment discussion we're going to talk about the disaster artist so we'll talk about the disaster artist if you haven't seen the room um this movie probably wouldn't make a lot of sense to you but if you have it's a lot more funny than you'd probably anticipate so we'll talk about that and of course the final and the most important topic that we're going to be getting into the big one is is religion more divisive and dangerous than politics so we'll dive a little bit into our own, um, I guess, experiences with that, as well as, you know, some of the things that have caused some dangers in the world and try and figure out what is more dangerous and more divisive, um, politics or religion. So let's have them go um, battle each other going. What you, what you want? Right now, let's talk about uh, the relationship, uh, the Me Too update. Um, in case anyone hasn't seen the new time cover, um, you know, the time cover that mm-hmm. had come out, um, Donald Trump, sorry, Trump, but, uh, you were not chosen you as lose. person of the year for time. Instead, it was, um, the, uh, silence breakers, mm-hmm. um, with their me too campaign. Um, and it looks like it's still going on, which is pretty much women having a voice in the workplace mm-hmm. and just, you know, in general. But, you know, in the workplace and just who they are and mostly men, mostly men uh, who can't keep their hands to themselves. And we're getting a lot of people that are getting brought down. And what's also being exposed is how many industries are involved in this. So at first it was it seemed like it was more of the entertainment industry, you know, the Weinsteins and the uh, when Ashley Judd, uh, uh, when her uh, event in what her assault was reported on and then all of these other TV producers and actors. But now uh, what I did like about the cover is that you had, again, not only just entertainment industry, but you had some people then in agriculture industry that were spotlighted of their assaults that they haven't been to deal with. These are, this has been a a woman, and I apologize, I don't have her name in front of me, um, but she was sharing her experiences as uh, working in the fields, as a, 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 picking the fields uh, over uh, in, in, you know, picking vegetables and fruit over in central California. And the assault that she receives, not only from the men that are with her on the lines, but also then from the owners of the farms and yeah. that experience. Yeah, she was using a pseudonym, Isabel Pascual, a uh, strawberry picker um, harassed by a man who threatened to harm her and her children, um, which was really kind of cool because they chose somebody who most people, especially in certain areas of politics, consider a nobody. Mm-hmm. And, you know, here she is 
although Shetty is a pseudonym in order to avoid being deported and who is doing the job of picking strawberries, which, believe it or not, is very important in the agricultural industry. And it's because, so hard to do. And it's very hard work that you're not going to have Chad and Kaylee doing it. They're not going to be doing the work that she does. So you deport her, and trust me, you're going to have a problem. And especially when you go to buy some of that produce, you're going <laughs> to you're going yeah. you're going to pay. You're going to try pay. to make your organic preserves. You know, think about that. So to have her on the cover um, as someone who was harassed by a man. Um, you know, it was pretty important for them. Of course, they had to sell magazines, so they put Taylor Swift on there. She, all right, she had a little case, but Taylor Swift definitely wasn't um, the largest person who could have been on the cover. Um, right. I don't think she shifted anything. No, I don't think she did. Everything that um, she does, she pretty much does for herself. Um, one person they didn't have on the cover was the person who actually started the Me Too hashtag um, over 10 years ago, uh, which was Tarana Burke. And she wasn't featured on. She was featured on the inside, but she, she should have been mm-hmm. on the cover. Without mm-hmm. her, this wouldn't have existed. To tell you the truth, without her, um, Alyssa Milano and um, Rose and, McGowan, and, yeah, and Rose McGowan, like they should have hit the cover more than. Yeah, and not that it's a contest, but I think they had much more of an impact as into the importance of this. Tell and who it. was the female reporter then from Fox? Um, oh, oh, you're talking about, uh, oh, God, uh, the one who brought Ailes down. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Her name's completely like Gretchen. Gretchen Carlson. There we go. Like, that Gretchen was huge. Gretchen Carlson. Yeah, that was huge. Like, that was bringing a media empire down, as well as, you know, anybody who brought down Bill O'Reilly and, you know, some of these other people. But as you can see, it continues on. Um, also, rounding out the five was um, Tessa Fowler um, and uh, Adama Iwu, um, as well as Ashley Judd, like you said. But the people, and, and also, you know, like Terry Crews, he was also a big one because mm-hmm. he had a, um, people were saying, why isn't he on the cover? There were some people that weren't on the cover. But then what they did, were, what was really clever was they had an empty elbow, which was supposed to represent, you know, anybody else who didn't have a voice or wasn't able to speak up. And so I thought that representation was pretty cool. Um, um, and, you know, I don't think that you're going to wind up being able to do this right without people complaining about it. But. Taylor Swift, I don't think needed to be on there personally. Yeah, I don't think so. That's just me. Um, but some of the other people that had come up, you know, um, such as uh, who was the congressman from Minnesota? My man, the comedian from Saturday Night Live. Oh my gosh! Uh, just why Franklin? Frank, Franklin. Yeah, yeah, Franken. Uh, thank you, Al Franken. Al Franken. So you know, poor Al. Not poor Al. You know, Al was acting like an ass um, in a few of his things. But considering, and, you know, the accusers that have come forward to, you know, say that he had done some misconduct and, you know, uh, Conyers, Conyers is out. Um, we're talking about a lot of these candidates that are out, but yet the conservatives are still pushing Donald Trump to be, you know, a head leader and Roy Moore, mm-hmm. you know. So anyway, the the um, the uh, what do you call it? Election is going to be today uh, between Jones and Roy Moore. So let's see how the public picks. Uh, are they going to check a pick, you know, somebody who's very capable of you know, his politics or they're going to pick a child molester you know let's see exactly what Alabama does it's your time to shine Alabama yeah I don't have a lot of faith in you right now so anyway let's discuss the disaster artist so of course we went and saw the disaster artist last night and it was funny <laughs> I think we like took over the robe laughing so hard <laughs> So if you don't know, um, there's a movie out there called The Room, which is probably one of the worst movies. It's listed as one of the worst movies ever made. And um, you introduced me to The Room. Yeah, I introduced a lot of people to The Room. I, I, I got caught up on The Room on some. It wasn't. It wasn't even Comedy Central. It was some. It was a. Uh, I forgot what what TV show. Um, but. <laughs> It said that like they were late gonna, night. It was so night. late night. I was in New Jersey and I was watching this movie. Like, what the hell is this? Because uh, they said that they were going to put on um, a uh, what's that? A marathon. It was going to be a marathon uh-huh. of the room, and they were blocking these huge swaths of black. To, instead of black, just a line for to hide the nudity. It was like the whole black. I mean, it was crazy. But um, I forgot what channel it was. But they said they were going to run a marathon. They only showed it once. He was so stupid, so they were playing a joke on the joke. <laughs> but anyway, um, Tommy Wiseau is the writer, producer, everything. Director. Director, financier, whatever. He did everything for the, for his, his own Lighting. movie. Lighting. <laughs> and it's one of those things where you know about him, but you don't know about him because he, he, nobody knows his past. Nobody knows anything about him. But this guy put out this movie called The Room, which is the most insane 
you couldn't put a movie out like that on purpose if you tried. That's what was so bugged out. It was mm-hmm. literally somebody who didn't know how to do a movie and wanted to make a movie. So you just made one. And you wanted to make yourself look like the hero. So you starred in it. But then you wanted all your opinions about it. But you don't speak English so well because, I don't know, you just may have a mental you know, issue. You may not be so well. <laughs> <laughs> but you still wrote a script. And so, uh, anyway, if you can go ahead and And you were lucky that. enough to have financing. And that's the enigma about Tommy Wiseau is that nobody knew where he got money. It's not like he went to a job in the daytime and then did all of this writing and producing and directing in the evening. He just had money. And he never told anybody about his past. And no one knew where he got this money. He had so much money that he was able to buy his camera equipment. Instead you don't of buy printing. the camera. You rent camera camera equipment anyone in the, in the industry knows you rent camera equipment because they are expensive you're not going to keep them you're just going to borrow them pay the people the fee whatever they're supposed to work and they can take care of the upkeep and then you just go ahead and you know do your th- this guy bought them uh, and not just one he bought what the digital yeah he did a digital and, and 35 the- millimeter like what are you doing <laughs> this is like what were you doing going all the time so um, it was um dave franco and james franco i think james franco he had directed it and um it was called the disaster artist based on greg C- cicero i think cicero Sestero or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is me going by. He was the co uh, the the co host in the movie The Room, um, and it just showed. He, he wrote a book called The Disaster Artist. And it's funny. Uh, my roommate Kristen, uh, my ex roommate Kristen, um, had uh, bought the book, and it was like a toilet book. Like it was, you sat there in the bathroom and read it. <laughs> and it was so funny that that Franco um, wanted to do this movie so badly for for a long time. And that he did it. He brought it to the big screen. And this enigma, Tommy Wiseau, is like back again, you know. And um, it's one of those things. It starts Seth Rogen and a few other people. That I mean, Zac Efron. I couldn't believe that was him. <laughs> like, I literally did not know until the preview. That was funny. I had to. James Franco threw himself into into knowing every single inch of how to. Yeah. React like was so talk like him, dress like him. Everything. Every reaction, like he was. He him. became him, and re- the the scenes they redid of the room, they did almost to perfection. You have to see it till the end, because then they show, uh, they compare the films, and we, like what uh, Zod said about comparing each scene. Like Franco and his team were just. That's I mean, how much they, they respected it. Yeah, you. Re- it's it's one of those movies where you have to get with a buddy and just watch it. Get, get with a few people if you can. Watch it. And if you can, find out where it's showing on the big screen because you will not have that experience. It's a wild to see it on the big screen. But if you can't, make sure you see The Disaster Artist and it will get you curious enough to at least get the DVD. Be in a theater because you get to laugh with other people. It's a good experience. Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Zod. And I'm Drea. And we want you to check out the Zod and Drea podcast every Tuesday. Where can everybody find us at? Hmm. You can always check us out on www.zodandrea.com. Where else? You can always check us out also on Facebook at Zod Andrea. Instagram? Zod Andrea. Snapchat. Zod and Drea. YouTube. Zod and Drea. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. <laughs> so if you haven't caught that, catch us at Zod Andrea on all the social networks. But also make sure you subscribe to the Zod Andrea podcast, where? At ZodAndrea.com. And also on YouTube and iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, we're coming for you. Let us know what you think, and if you want to be a guest, reach out to us. And put all of your input into whatever our topics are for the week, please. So we hope to check you out and see you there. Bye! Okay, let's get started on this topic. All right, so the topic is, is religion more divisive and dangerous than politics? So, we wanted to know this topic because we thought that it would be something interesting because, have you, you know, Christmas is coming, Mm -hmm. and the one thing you don't want to do is talk about religion and bring up MAGA or, you know, they'll bring up Barack Obama at the Christmas table because somebody is going to get pissed. Someone is. Mm-hmm. Someone's going to want to say grace. And people usually chill out about that. Right. Whatever. They just kind of tolerate that. And, it's like, and maybe this conversation has already happened during Thanksgiving. But at least if not, then we're going to prep you on. We already know what's coming up. <laughs> um, so we were trying to do a little bit of research to see what was um, more divisive. 
So in case you don't know, we have online what's called the Zod Andrea Think Tank. And the Think Tank are individuals who we find to be at least our friends who are intellectually inclined to discuss topics with a with a flair, you know, and able to write more than three words per sentence and, you know, able to dive deep into a topic. So the Think Tank, which is a public group, believe it or not, we made it public. It's kind of private, but anybody can join. Um, and all you have to do look up is the Zod Andrea Think Tank. But we had some people who went and put some time into this topic. So we decided to make this our topic for today. And uh, we'll discuss some of the things that they say soon. Mm hmm. Um, but as for now, is religion the cause of most wars? But let's I, start there. What do, you want, do we want to share opinions? Yeah. I say yes. Believe it or not, what they did was they did a little study on most wars. So if you at least think of most common wars, the Gulf mm -hmm. War, that wasn't religion. It that was, was oil. power. Yeah. Um, Revolutionary War, not religion. Mm -mm. Um, the Cold War, well, if you want to call it a war, it wasn't really a war. They were just cold. They were just cold. Um, cold Vietnam hearted. War. Power. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to, let's go in reverse and try to think of wars that were mm -hmm. based on religion. Right. Well, you had, um, uh, what was the war with Constantine? Um, the Crusades. Crusades, yeah. That was definitely, um, religious based. Um, and even before the Crusades with the, uh, Turks and, um, and now I'm like, all of a sudden got a blanket in my head. See, see, ah! see. Like, it's funny. If you really look at it through it, there really weren't as many, um, wars that were started by religion. Mm -hmm. Um, not, I guess not as in comparison, at least, especially not the more recent wars, I should say, you know, World War II. And, you know, there were people who just killed too many they killed millions of people by, for power for um corruption which almost has to say it's political base mm -hmm. well then so if we look at let's say the middle east right now too with um what's going on in israel but is that religion um is now, that it, more it, political or is that more religious because it is i think it's based it's based a lot of it is based um I think, uh, like, any religion, like, peacekeeping missions have been going on for a while. So, anything religion-based, people, there's, there's the option to do peace. But I don't think that Palestinians are like, you know what, you're Jewish, and you just suck. And, you know, the Israelites are like, you know what, you're just Muslim assholes, and, and you, you, you know, you, I hate the fact that you, you worship this. I don't think it's about worshiping, necessarily. They have differences in culture. But it's also about, well, in that, that's just Israel being dicks, per personally, um, and just illegally dumping over settlements and making their land smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but that has nothing to do with religion. That's more just land power? It's not even land. It, it is land power. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. land power. And, you know, the peacekeeping mission is about who's on our side. The way that Trump went ahead and just pretty much declared war, if you want to say it, on the, the Palestinians was by... Always, the United States always, always sides with Israel no matter what. No mm -hmm. matter what we do, we side with Israel. It doesn't matter what it is. No matter how corrupt Netanyahu is, we side with Israel. Oh, and they always say, oh, Israel, even during the Obama years, Israel's our greatest ally. It's like, shut up, please. But there was always a line that the United States never crossed when it came to that. It would, it would give well, its would allegiance, to. but not to the point where they would want to... You know, but, try to change up but their no map. One knows, but no one knows why there's so much allegiance. Like, why is it that Israel can do whatever they want? There's got to be some power you know, involved so, in that. But it's not. It, but, or is it religious-based? Like, is it that they don't want to, oh, you know, um, maybe the Holocaust or feel, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, and then maybe the leader's like, oh, you know, they had such atrocities. Let's not do anything. But let's give them dual citizenship. Let's do this. Let's give them like $6 billion a year. Is it the evangelists and Christian base groups here? I don't know. It's like, you know, it's because the tol what, what they'll do here is they'll tolerate more. Christians here will tolerate Jews mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, like, it's so funny. If you'll see a speech on Israel, oh, you know, the Israel, the Jews are whatever, the most are, oh my God, they, the, the hillbillies and the MAGA hats and everybody and we'll just clap and all this other stuff. But then they'll also be the first ones to make a friggin' anti-Semitic joke about, like, a Jew, um, for no reason, like Roy Moore's, Moore's wife today, like right? Roy Moore's <laughs> wife today, you know, oh, she's, you know. Which she, his she, campaign now is trying to say it's fake news. Sure it is. Anyway. Car 
Um, so, you know, there's certain things you don't want. And I think that they tiptoe so much around it, around Jews, instead of just discussing it. But Muslims, they have no problem taking Muslims and throwing them down the river. Mm -hmm. going and, Even though there are more Muslims than Christians in the, in the world. Yeah. Um, this is about even. But it's like uh, you, you go ahead and, you know, try and insult one religion while trying propping up another. You're going to cause a rift based on religion, even though under, underneath it is probably based also on politics. Like they're doing it for a reason. For instance, Trump moved Jerusalem or I don't know how he did. He's moving the embassy to another city saying, oh, Jerusalem's going to be from now on the... Uh, the, the city, capital. the capital. You know, he didn't discuss anything. Like he didn't discuss this. He he did this so that he can cause a rift. The Muslims will act up. The Palestinians, and he can be like, "Look, look, I told you the Muslim Muslims are savages." Now I, I gotta you. pass my ban. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, now I gotta do this. Like that's what he's doing. And look at my base. My base is awesome because they love Jews and they hate Muslims. But if you look at um, other wars, even nine eleven. After that, the you know the the um the uh, Iraq war and um. Not Gulf? Pa not the Gulf. No, not Pakistan. Um, God, is Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at these wars, like they'll use religion as a basis for it, almost. Because after 9-11, before 9-11, even after um, Jimmy Carter, with uh, when he had his whole crisis, um, what was it, Egypt? Um, uh, the, it wasn't Iran. It uh, was uh, yeah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I'm sorry, people. My, my brain, I'm tired. Anyway. But when he had that, that um, whole kidnapping situation, and that just went to hell. Even still, people weren't shitting on, um, uh, what do you call it, or, um, Muslims. Mm -hmm. After 9-11, though, oh, there was this sense it. of, like, I hate Muslims. That last until this, it's 16 years later, and they still hate Muslims even more than ever. Mm -hmm. Because you have, like, this, this psychomegalomaniac in, in charge. And poor Sikhs have been either killed yeah. or harassed. Buddhists, like, mm -hmm. the people don't care. It's like, oh, you're brown? Oh, you must be Muslim. And you got something on your head. Yeah. yeah like, oh, we got to kill you now. We got to kill you. We got to beat you up. So it makes you wonder, do you think then in modern society now, or has this been going on for years, kind of what you were saying, alluding to in the, a little a bit previously about how wars claim to have been started by maybe a basis of religion, but truly it's all about Polit making political moves, land moves, power moves, uh, uh, to acquire, to obtain, you know, natural resources, oil. How many times do we know that so many wars have been started recently because of oil? You know, but it's what they, it's, it's almost using it as an excuse, but the people wind up following that perception. Is it easier for people to digest, to be like, okay, I need to find an enemy, and it's going to be... That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need an enemy. People need an enemy in order to rally behind like their country or whatever it is. So we have people in the middle of the United States, you know, they call it, you know, work, working class. You know, oh, like no one else yeah. works, Get, you know. They, the, they pick themselves the, up by the, the, the bootstraps. Christian, the, evan the evangelist, the, the right, white right-wing Christian, Christian. Yeah, you know, these people... And they are the most unchristian people in the world. They will hate Muslims. They think every liberal is is, is death on, mm -hmm. on a stick. You know, they, they will, no matter what, side with somebody who follows devilish politics, who hurts women, who is a cancer, and they will prop them up, who hurts children, and they will prop them up. Right, you know, they will hurt children, but... Darn it, I am anti-abortion. That's, that's just it. You know, you'll stick with one thing. You know, it says, thou shalt not kill, but, you know, I love the death penalty because you're here. And, you know, once you're born, I'm not going to help you or your mother out. Right, right. Um, so these are these people that are religious, quote-unquote, religiously based. But, yeah, sure, you go to church, but you never follow the religion. Or you're corrupted from the pulpit into what this religion is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, these, some of these people you discuss religion with them, it is dangerous. It's dangerous. So let's let's go let, let's go to the think tank right quick. So we posed the question too uh, to the think tank about uh, considering religion more divisive and potentially dangerous, um, and using it just as a table of discussion, um, we got some guys like Nina Thurnbeck. She said something interesting um, because she used herself as an example and saying that throughout her life she'd always heard that there are two things you don't discuss: politics and religion. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we said. You know, everybody knows this. Um, but she uses a, an example of her in-laws and how they don't ask a lot of questions, but don't disregard the conversations about these topics and how they're Catholic, but also understanding. But she also has Christian friends who truly do embody the good faith and they're good people. 
But religion to her, a religion alone is not necessarily dangerous. Politics alone is not necessarily dangerous. But while religion can exist without politics today, politics can absolutely not exist without religion, which is kind of what we were just saying. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at what our, our look at, um, uh, what was it? The, um, uh, the, oh God, a Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. You say, what's, what is in the Pledge of Allegiance? You're mixing religion and politics. Well, same with uh, money. I mm -hmm. mean, at some point, and money trust. and God mm -hmm. we trust. I don't know why God has to be on a dollar bill. Which isn't that blasphemous. Yeah, it's like, why didn't you put it in Allah we trust? Like, what, what are you talking about? But if you put it in Allah we trust, they would say, wait, uh, no, oh, wait, no. whoa. Like, oh, I can't spend Hold this up. money. You know? So, Alicia, she believes that wars um, are more dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, name Well, in, in wars, she says um, that religion is the one that uh, will cause more wars. So she's pretty much on in line with you right. in that thinking. Where, like, if you take Boko Haram or some of the other genocides that have happened in the world, the genocides that had happened weren't even religious-based. Like, even the, the, I guess, the Hutsi and Hutus, um, it wasn't really, it was more culture also. Um, I have to look more into it, but, you know, I mean, if you look at somebody, especially if you're African and Hutu, Hutu can you just look at someone and know what religion they are, no. you know, <laughs> like, like probably not, you know. And there was an attack, uh, a terrorist attack, actually, if, uh, what, last month uh, overseas. Oh, forgive me. It was Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it was over. It was a, it was a church that was attacked. Uh, it was a, a, a where it was a sector of Muslims that are uh, they're more spiritual. Mm -hmm. That they were bombed, like their their um their place of worship was bombed, and it was women and children. Over three hundred people were killed. Again, it's a sector of the same type of religion, like like Catholics and Catholicism, and they the, the, this group was they believed that um Allah was more spiritual and not so much of a being. And for that sect that was extremist, they thought that that was wrong and that was. Uh, uh, blasphemous, and they had to die. Like I just don't understand that. I mean, I don't understand any of any of that stuff. Um, but Tony Tony uh, Vasquez had said um, in his experience, he'd have to say that religion is more divisive. So mm -hmm. he thinks the religion is more divisive than politics. Saying politics seems to be an easier thing to avoid, and religious folks tend to be less tolerable of others and express more self righteous feelings. So he's not speaking in, in you know in totality or in absolutes nice response uh, tony there you go tony that's my man um so he says it kind of makes it difficult to be cordial with folks who will not cease to uh attempt to convert you and it's funny like people do i swear he, he's right though like people do try to you know convert you <laughs> in religion um to the point <laughs> where they knock on your door but i guess you know it's almost the same if you really think about it because in politics when people were canvassing for a politician knocking on the door they knock they also just like jehovah witness they knock on the door to say mm -hmm. hey consider voting for this guy um, but at least if anything that's issue based, but it's still politics, but it's also issue based, whereas religion is strictly about saving your soul. Have you heard the word of the Lord? You know, it's like, I mean, yeah, I hear it. <laughs> like, you know, like, what are you, what are you telling me? <laughs> so, you know, discussing some of that and just faith, um, faith versus, um, do we talk about politics. Robin and her post? I mean, you can if you can do it real quick. Uh, so with Robin and I, I, I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. I'll just call you Robin V. Um, she pretty much says that uh, it tells me that the first time she met her husband, they talked about religion. Um, but I'm sorry, with a more political and what she does believe, though, is definitely religious is, is very divisive, is, is more than anything. At least with politics, they were able to get on some type of, of medium. Yeah, really, I really? gotta run over. Like, I, really? I know. I'm like, so really? sorry, Robin. I every time. I'm like, <laughs> anyway, that's um, our discussion on the podcast on religion versus um, politics, what's more divisive and dangerous. Um, to me, I would have to say probably um, religion is more divisive. But politics is right next to it. I think you it's know. getting so blended now. But it's weird, and it is. But anyway, yo, you know, you guys can always catch us again. We'll tell you again, just in case you haven't gotten it. We're on Facebook, Zod Andrea, and Zod Andrea pretty much everywhere. Dot com, uh, hashtag Z and D, um, Instagram, you, you name it, we're there. And also, let us know about your thoughts about today's conversation. 
Tell us if you want to be part of our think tank, too. If you think that your opinion is all that, let us know. And let's see if we can get you on the think tank. And we also want to make sure. We're going to advertise also. If you haven't seen it yet, go to zodandrea.com. Fill out the comment section so that you can submit articles and information. Bye.